He has a special on Amazon Prime called Not Dead Yet. Jim Mendrinos, everyone. Jim Mendrinos. started to get dropped that's that's what I am basically you know there has to be somebody here so you guys look at the check and you go fifty three dollars this fucker's not that funny I'm that dude I'm the one they put up for that how are you how you doing there are like three people doing good the rest of you guys are looking at me like you better be funny in a hurry you got like a high high brush kind of like, you having a good day at least a good day yeah. it is the same three people you know what I get it <laughs> It's Sunday night, it's a little late. What do you just say? We skip the rest of the show, put our heads on the table, nap for 10 minutes. You know? Woo! Well, power nap, you know what I'm saying? I love a nap. I'm going to start my show right. I love a nap, man. I can sleep for 10 hours, have a bowl of cereal, nap for four more hours. I'll be honest with you. If it's a real strenuous day, I might need a six hour power nap. I'll be really honest. Yet there are some days I've done nothing but ejaculate and sleep. I'll be really honest with you. I don't know why I look directly at you for that joke, sir. I apologize. <laughs> Kind of turn this into a prison film for just a second. <laughs> That's good. You guys, you, you look good. Can I say that about you? I'm not just saying that because everyone knows somebody in this room by name. You look good. You, this is what I'm saying. Sometimes the audience doesn't look that good. Do you know what I'm saying? When I walk in the room and I'm the prettiest person in the room, that is an ugly fucking audience. That's. There's got to be like an uptick. Do you know what I'm saying? You got to look at the audience and go, "That's my goal." Do you know what I'm saying? You got to look at somebody and you got to go. That, if I could, anybody in this room, boom, I would do that person. And there are some nights when I've walked into this club and I go, if I could do anyone in this room, it would be me. And that's the sad part, because I have me all the time. It's not a quest. So like, it's an odd club. I, got, I had the oddest experience at, the, at this club. I, uh, I did a show one night in the, the big room upstairs, and I'm leaving the show. And as I'm leaving the show, it was a nice show. It was a fun show. And this, uh, this guy comes running after me. He goes, excuse me, excuse me. And I go, yes, sir. He goes, I thought you were very funny, and I just want to tell you I thought you were very funny. And they're like, I love a compliment, dude. Thank you so much. He goes, do you have a business card? And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. I'm going to you know, get a gig out of this. So I handed my card, and I went, what's the gig? He goes, no gig. I just thought we'd have coffee sometime. <laughs> what about me looks tolerant? That's my question. Because <laughs> when you look at me, I look like that guy that you should not be having MLGBTQ conversation with. Do you know what I'm saying? I look like if you put me in a red hat, you don't look at me like, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> I understand the look I have. And this guy just looked at me and went, that is my mountain. I must climb it. <laughs> I mean, and here's the thing. I had coffee with the fucker. And, Cause if you're rolling up on me, I need to know what the hell I did. Cause I want to channel that and move it towards the sex that I'm inclined to. That's the way I'm just looking at it. There's so many weird things that have happened in the past few years. I, uh, I became a dad. And, uh, that's, um, well, actually, stepdad is what it is. I don't have biological kids of my own, but the woman that uh, I'm with now, she has kids, and it was, uh, it was scary because I realized I had dad genes, and I didn't know I had dad genes. Do you know those things, those things your dad used to do instinctually? I have those, and it's fucking freaking me out. I'll give you an example. Like, uh, she's 13 right now, and her position in life is on the couch, either on the phone or watching YouTube. That's where she is all times of the day and night. So I know where my kid is, and I come home from work one day, and I'm about 45 minutes early. I'm supposed to walk in at 11. It's 10.15. I open the door. She's on the couch watching TV, and as I'm opening the door, she scrambles, and she shuts off the TV. And immediately, without realizing, I went... What are you watching? And that's a dad gene right there. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I'll be honest, I don't give a fuck what she's watching. As long as you, you're not killing somebody, I'm, I'm pretty cool with what you do as a child. Because here's the whole thing. I was a bad kid. And if you were bad, some of you guys were shitty kids. Were you not? Were the shitty kids? And you know if you're a shitty kid, you're going to be a really liberal parent. Like, as long as you're not as shitty as I am, we're fucking cool. But I had that moment and it just reared up. And she's like, I was just watching TV. And I'm like, why'd you turn off the TV? And she goes, because I just want to spend time with you. <laughs> and now I know she's fucking lying to me. <laughs> like, right there, I got you. I know this is bullshit. I'm like, what were you watching? And we're going back and forth. And then I, you know, I realize she's on my Netflix, so I'll be able to figure out what she's watching. So I walk in the other room, I turn on the TV, 
and I see that she was watching Aquaman. I'm like, why would you fucking turn off the TV if you're watching Aquaman? And then I went, oh, that's why you would turn off the TV. <laughs> While watching, because I remember being 14 and my mom walking in the house when I was watching Wonder Woman and Linda Carter spinning around and I would turn that shit off really quick. And back then we didn't have remote controls. You had to do it with your erection from across the room. That was a hard thing. Literally, that was a hard thing is what I'm saying. You're the weirdest little audience and I dig you for that. Uh, there, there, are some, there are a lot of women in my house and here's the whole thing. My lab, I used to live in Washington Heights. That's where I used to live. And it was me and a, a bunch of dude roommates. And I love Washington Heights. That was the place where I knew I was home. You know I knew I was home? First day I moved into Washington Heights. And I'm walking down on my street. And I accidentally kick a rat. <laughs> and neither one of us broke stride. That was the day I knew. <laughs> He's just looking at me like I was going this way anyway, dude. And I'm like, I got you. I'll bring you pizza later. I got you, dude. And... Uh, I gotta tell you, Washington Heights was awesome. The women in Washington Heights wear very little clothing. I didn't even bother buying, you know, cable when I was in Washington Heights. I'd just sit on my fire escape and fucking look. That, that was my TV. And uh, made some days confusing. Some days were very confusing, like Halloween. Because women in Washington Heights wear very little clothing. Halloween, women wear even less clothing. Come Halloween, I don't know if they're tricking or treating. That was a bad day for me. All I know is one young lady knocked on my door and she left three and a half hours later with $400 in all of my candy. That was a good day. <laughs> or a bad day, depending on how you're looking at it. And the women at Washington Heights, man, they will roll up on you like they are the dudes. I'm literally leaving my building one day, and there's a woman following me for two blocks, like, where you going, Poppy? You look like you got a job. <laughs> and I'm there like it is 2.30 on a Tuesday afternoon. Clearly, you do not know what a job is. <laughs> if I had one of those bad boys, I would be in it right now. So I moved to the Burbs, and, and, and it went from having dude roommates to having it, it's uh, me, my wife, and two daughters. So I went from living with four guys in the apartment to me and three women in the apartment. And it, it, no, don't ever do that. <laughs> don't fucking do that. Like, do you know what kind of shampoo we had in our apartment when I was living with the guys? Whatever the fuck was on sale. That's what we had. I, I swear sometimes I shampooed with Fabulosa. I, that, that shit happened. I know that shit happened. And now I can't, like everything in the shower is really specific. Like we had soap and shampoo and that's as fancy as we fucking got as dudes. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be really honest, there were some times we forgot to go to the store and we just had soap. <laughs> and this, you're washing your hair with a bar of soap. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's dude me. Now there, there's like body scrub and facial scrub and, and neck scrub. There's a fucking product called neck scrub. What is a neck scrub? I don't need a, so I don't know what to shower with. I'm looking to match the parts and I'm there like, do you have the thing for the elbows? Where's the elbow scrub? I can't, I can't go out here with dirty fucking elbows. You need to help. And uh, here's the other thing too. Do you know what our shampoo smelled like when I was living with dudes? It smelled like shampoo. That's what it smelled like. Now I shampoo and I want a fucking cookie for three and a half hours. I'm there like, this is not fair. I'm already having a problem with candy. This is not fair. <laughs> There's lots of weirdness going on. My neighborhood, uh, I, moved, um, I moved from the city to the burbs. And I, I lived like in the city city. You know what I'm talking about? Washington Heights is the city. Like at three in the morning, there's fucking merengue music and salsa music and bachata playing on the street corner. There are people dancing, there are gunshots, there are sirens, it's fucking alive. <laughs> I move in with, with my wife and her kids and the first night, you know what I heard? Crickets. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> She's like, it's crickets. I'm there like, they're coming for us. <laughs> if I'm not hearing somebody scream in agony, how the fuck am I gonna fall asleep? I need to hear somebody in pain. <laughs> and I've lived in the country before. I lived in the country country for about a year when I really, because uh, I, I like got really bad seasonal depression and you, you make bad decisions with seasonal depression. So uh, one December I was really seasonally depressed and I decided to move to a remote cabin in Maine because that'll just make seasonal depression so much fucking better. <laughs> That's a good idea right there. So I did, I lived in a sea, like no neighbors for 14 miles. I had to be in a pickup truck and go and there was a wood stove. It was that kind of place. 
And here's the whole thing. When you live in the city, the animals are very clear with what they want from you. Like if you're in Manhattan and you see a cat or a rat looking at you, he's looking at you like, are you going to finish what you're eating? That's all they fucking care about. In the, in the country country, they, when the animals are looking at you, you know what they're thinking. You're, you're, in, you're in Maine and there's, there's a bear looking at you. He's looking at you like, you are fucking lunch. I don't know when I, I'm going to catch you and I'm going to eat you. And, but you, when you're in the suburbs, man, the animals are so close to you, you're just another big fucking furry thing to them. Do you know what I'm talking about? And they just, they're assholes. The animals are assholes. I yelled at a squirrel and for the next three days, it fucking threw acorns at my window. <laughs> like on a fucking timer. And I'm there like, I'm gonna kill the squirrel, I'm gonna kill that squirrel and I'm gonna fucking eat that squirrel. That's how much I hate the squirrel. And, and they get into your house. First day, I'm in my new place with my wife and a, a chipmunk broke into our kitchen. Chipmunk. And you can't get rid of chipmunks in your kitchen. You know I can't get rid of them? Because you tell people I got a chipmunk in my kitchen, and everyone goes, "Oh, <laughs> It's not adorable, people. It's not Alvin. He's not fucking singing to me. <laughs> There's a rodent shitting in my kitchen. You know what a chipmunk is? It's a rat with a good fucking press agent. That's what it is. <laughs> it, it, it is a rodent, no matter how you slice it. And, and I, had to get the, I had to get it out. My wife said, like, you're the man in the house. You get it out. And I'm there like, I, if there's a burglar, I could get him the fuck out. I can't get a chipmunk. So I went and I got the glue traps. That's what I got to get rid of. And everyone says that's cruel. You can't do that. No, the glue trap, that's cruel. Don't do the glue trap. But here's my way I'm thinking that. I, I am a lifelong New Yorker. If you are living in my house and not paying rent, you must fucking die. That's just, <laughs> that's how I look at it. You're a squatter. I'm going to eliminate you. I'm, I'm going to be a shitty landlord and kill you. So... I get the glue traps and everyone says, lay out one or two. I put out 14 glue traps. Do you know what I caught? I caught my wife and her two daughters. That's what I caught. Every morning, one of them was like, there's too many fucking glue traps. So I, I finally, one morning, like we're about three weeks into this and I'm trying to catch this and I feel like Wiley e. Coyote looking at the roadrunner, like I am going to fucking get you. And it never happens. And one morning I walk into the kitchen gloriously and I see the chipmunk. Just standing there. And I'm like, I fucking got you. Because he's standing there between two glue traps. If he moves forward, I get him. If he moves backwards, I get him. <laughs> the game is now afoot. I, victory is mine. And I look at him and they're like, that's right, little fucker. I got you. And then I saw, for the first time in my life, a rodent smile. <laughs> and it looked at me and it kicked the backwards glue trap. <laughs> Just kicked it out of the way. And then turned slowly and looked over his shoulder like, yeah, who's the bitch now, motherfucker? <laughs> and just walked out. Here's how long he was in my house. The kid named him. He became a pet. That is how long he stayed there. When he died, I had to bury him in the fucking yard. That is how long. That was in my house. <laughs> I, uh, a lot of animals just, just are in and around. I think the one that disturbed me the most was there was a spider that has been steady trying to catch me for over two years. I'll tell you the story of how that happened. I uh, go leave my house one day and I walk out of my house, take two steps, boom, face full of spider web. And that is the worst feeling in the world, is it not? That moment, face full of spider web, was the moment I knew I could never make porn. That was the moment. <laughs> if you're laughing, we know what you watch. All right. So I'm there like, no, th th I can't have this. Next morning I wake up, I know spiders are creatures of habit. I grab a broom, I open the door, knock down the web, and I won. And I look in the corner and there's a spider web, a spider looking at me like, you win this time, motherfucker. <laughs> so morning number three, I open the door, got the broom, I'm about to knock down the web, there's no web. I look around, there's no spider. I fucking won. And I walk out the door, I lock my door, I turn to the right, boom, face full of fucking spider web. And for the next two years, somewhere in my journey between my apartment and my parking spot, there is a spider web placed to catch me. And I know he's trying to catch me. You know how I know that? Because my wife and my daughters live in the house with me, and they're all shorter than me, and the web is at my fucking height. <laughs> the fucker is trying to catch And I know he's trying to catch me, because every time I get hit with the spider web, I look around and I see him, and he's just looking at me longingly, like, oh, if I catch this one, I never have to hunt again. <laughs> like, I am his Moby Dick. He's just rubbing his eight little legs like, call me Ishmael. 
You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Jim Mendrinos, everyone.